The redstone torch. A rather interesting component. Yo, what's going on guys? Core here. Welcome back to another episode of Core's Redstone Guide. Today is episode number four where we will cover redstone torches and logic gates. Before we get into today's episode, I do want to say really quickly, please make sure you watch the videos in order of the playlist and that way you don't miss out on any crucial information to guide you forward with this series. But without further ado, assuming you have watched the other couple of videos, let's get into this one. So first of all, we will start off by talking about this wonderful redstone component, which really makes the whole thing possible. Without this thing, redstone would be very difficult. I'm pretty sure it would even be impossible. So what does this thing do? First thing to note about the redstone torch is that it will give out a redstone signal in every neighboring block. This means up, down, left, right, front, and back, giving out a power level of 15 to every direction. But in the world of redstone, this thing is known as an inverter. This thing will take an incoming signal and invert it. You can see if we turn this lever on, then it will turn off the torch, which in turn depowers this lamp. It takes the signal and inverts it. Now, how can you invert a signal using this thing? Well, you can use it on top of blocks or on the side of blocks. Using this method, you can invert the torch, and yes, it also works with redstone dust. What you can't do, however, is directly power the torch like so. That does nothing. And you also cannot place the torch on the side of the block. So taking this key's concept of being able to turn a redstone torch off and on, thus inverting it, we can then put that into something called logic gates. Now, for anyone who's got a bit of a background in computer science, you will know what these things are. So this thing may look quite complicated, but this is known as an AND gate. What an AND gate means is when this and this are both on, the output will be given. And I can demonstrate that by doing something like this. So only when both are on is when the output will be given. The reason why is because these are getting inverted, but because they're connected to the same redstone line, it doesn't matter if only one's on, this will always be powered can see if this is on as well, this still remains powered. Only when both are off, this thing will turn on, turning this on and powering the rest of the circuit. So this is a really cool example of an AND gate. Another kind of logic gate that you can make is called an OR gate. Now this is quite simply an OR gate. All it is, is meaning that only this one or this one needs to be powered. You don't need both to power it technically, but as long as one lever is on, then the output will be on. This is known as an OR gate. And if you want to get technical about it, this simply here is a NOT gate, meaning that the input is not the output. It's opposite, okay? It's literally just inverting it. Now, these are some fundamental redstone circuits. I can tell you I have used these logic gates quite a lot, but depending on the contraption you're making, you may not always need to know about logic gates. So there we have it, peeps. We have covered OR gates. We have covered and gates, and we have also covered not gates. Now, in computer science, there are also a bunch of other weird wacky gates, such as ZOR gate, uh, NAND gates, NOR gates, all of those things, um, of which you can freely use your time to look them up. I'm not going to teach them here because I don't think they're very useful in terms of redstone. However, yes, just go and look up different logic gates. They're very cool and very useful. However, there is one key thing about a redstone torch that you need to know about. This is called a burnout clock. A setup like this will cause the torch to rapidly flicker until it burns out. If you send a block update to the torch after some time, then it will reactivate. A block update can be a block next to it getting destroyed or placed or changing state. However, in your exploration of the redstone world, you are likely going to encounter this specific setup of a redstone burnout clock. And yeah, I just thought I'd make you aware of that because it can be a bit of a problem sometimes. But also at the same time, it can be quite useful. Say if you want to, dis to dispense a number of items, you can have a redstone burnout clock do that for you. Pulses eight times. Just FYI. But that is going to be it for today's episode. We covered the redstone torch and some very basic logic gates. 
If you did enjoy this video or found it useful at all, consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button as it does help me out a ton. But other than that, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video where we will cover some redstone clocks. Goodbye.